Columbus Day, and welcome to CSU News. I'm Cody Waugh. And I'm Sharifa Jackson. Here's what's happening this week on campus. The Boys and Girls Clubs of the Chattahoochee Valley will welcome CSU volunteers and local artists this Friday, November 1st, as they celebrate their work with Columbus area youth with the 75 Blue Doors, an art project commemorating the club's 75 years in the Valley. Columbus Day art students are set to join some of the 850 children served daily by the local boys and girl clubs to create unique works of art out of 75 doors. The clubs are still seeking donations as well as volunteers to support this event, which will take place from 3 to 7 p.m. at the North Columbus Club. If you would like to participate in this event, contact Wendy McReynolds at 706-596-9330 or by email at wmcreynolds at bgccolesga.org. Students interested in a fresh way to get into the Halloween spirit are encouraged to attend medieval and renaissance storytelling at the Carson McCullers Center this Wednesday night. This event will feature tales of monsters and ghosts from these early periods of European literature. The stories begin at 7 p.m. and this event is free and open to the public. Speaking of scary stories, Cougar Athletics have been striking fear into the heart of opponents this entire semester. For more on CSU's frightening athletic prowess, we return to Stephen Williams with sports. With your CSU Sports, I'm Stephen Williams. Let's start the week off with checking in on Lady Cougar Volleyball. The Lady Cougars are on a roll as Tuesday night they knocked off Montevallo in Peach Belt Conference action. It was their fifth straight victory as they went to five sets alternating. Sets one through five with the Lady Cougars coming out on top in the fifth and final set. It was a, a vengeful loss, or a vengeful win rather, for CSU as they picked up a victory over a team that knocked them off earlier in the conference season. The Lady Cougars with five straight wins now are 16-7 and seven overall, and they are now up to fourth in the Peach Belt Conference and just one game away at a second place. So a strong showing so far for that inaugural program in the Lady Cougars volleyball team. Let's switch gears over to women's soccer. Had a rough go of things on Wednesday night at the Walden Soccer Complex as they lost to North Georgia 3-2, but they bounced back on Saturday. They went to Greenwood, South Carolina, Knocked off the Bearcats of Lander, 1-0. It was Mandy Janowitz in the second half that netted the goal for CSU, giving them the win and pushing them into a tie for second place with that Lander team, who they hold the tiebreaker over, and also making them 11-3 overall. So still sitting in very good shape as they get set to wind down the regular season. Turning to Columbus State men's golf, the seventh ranked team in the country in its second tournament of the year Monday and Tuesday, finished second as they were competing in the TVA Credit Union Classic over in Killen, Alabama. Robert Mize has had a terrific start to the season. The sophomore Cougar golfer is two for two. He's won both tournaments that the Cougars have competed in and looking to make it three for three as they compete early on this week. Finally, last week, it was cross country. J.D. Evilsizer's men's and women's teams were competing in the first Peach Belt Conference championship of the season, the 23rd overall Peach Belt Conference cross country championships, and it was the Cougars and Lady Cougars each ending up in the runner-up position. The women finished second overall, falling behind Flagler, and it was the men who, in a historic finish, tied with Georgia Regents University. It was the first ever tie in a Peach Belt Conference cross-country meet, but due to the tiebreaker rules, the Cougars ended up on the wrong side of the historic occasion and ended up as the runner-up. Seven Cougar runners and Lady Cougars were named to all conference teams based on their performances. Jacob Dirkman, Ryan McFall, Nathan Reeves, Ian Edwards on the men's side with Monique English, Renee Usher, and Raina Green. All the Lady Cougars finishing with all conference honors and Lady Cougar head coach J.D. Evil Sizer named the Peach Belt Conference Women's Cross Country Coach of the Year. So congratulations to all of those people. And they're now getting set for their regional competition coming up in just a couple of weeks as they're hoping to qualify for the national championship as well. Let's take a look at what your schedule looks like for the upcoming week. First, men's and women's golf are both in action on Monday and Tuesday, the 28th and 29th. The men are in Orlando, Florida, competing in the McDonough Cup, while the women are in their tournament, the Rock Barn Collegiate Invitational, over in Conover, North Carolina. Volleyball. 
returns to the floor after seven days off. They're on the road in Rome, Georgia on Tuesday night, seven o'clock start time for the first serve against Shorter University before they hit back into conference play for arguably their toughest road trip of the season. Friday and Saturday, they're off to St. Augustine and Savannah as they'll take on Flagler on Friday night at seven and then Armstrong on Saturday at two o'clock. Those two teams right now, Flagler ranked third in the Peach Belt Conference and Armstrong is 20 and 0 this season and that's who they'll see on Saturday, the top team in the Peach Belt Conference and one of the best in all of the land. Women's soccer wraps up their season, regular season portion at least, this week. Wednesday, they will host Montevallo, 6 o'clock start time at the Walden Soccer Complex and then the regular season closes out on Saturday. UNC Pembroke in town for a 1 o'clock first kick from the Walden Soccer Complex. So two more chances in the regular season to come out and see your Lady Cougars. We hope to see all of you out there on Wednesday and Saturday. And then finally, on Saturday, it is women's basketball, the first basketball action of the year. Coming your way from the Lumpkin season is the women's team. We'll play an exhibition game against Reinhardt College Saturday. That'll get started for you at 3 o'clock. So plenty of events for you to come out to across campus this week. A couple of soccer games Wednesday and Saturday and basketball coming up for you on on Saturday as well. So we're glad you're with us and hope that you check out everything that CSU Sports has to offer over the course of the next seven days. With your CSU Sports this week, I'm Stephen Williams. Thanks, Stephen. When we return, we'll have Joey with your weekly weather. We'll also take a look at what the campus organizations have been busy doing these past few weeks here at CSU. Don't go anywhere, you're tuned into CSU News. spend some time outdoors on a Halloween night on Thursday night? Well, weatherman Joey Davila is here to tell you what you can expect for All Hallows Eve and the week ahead. What do you have for us, Joey? Good afternoon, Columbus. I'm Joey Davila, and there is an earthquake imminently approaching the Columbus area at this moment. Grab your loved ones and not really, but there could be just one of the many reasons why you should watch Columbus State weather. You never know when an emergency is going to happen. I'm Joey Davila, and this is a pumpkin. And this is also Pumpy, the studio pumpkin. He's going to be giving you your weather today. Seven day forecast. Let's get started. Starting on Monday. October 28th, we have a high of 78, a low of 55, and some scattered showers. That's a 70% chance of rain, folks, and southward winds moving at 5 miles an hour. Then on Tuesday, October 29th, 
we have a high of 81, a low of 57, and mostly sunny weather going from 70 to 0% chance of rain, and southeast winds at 5 miles an hour. On Wednesday, October 30th, we have a high of 81, a low of 59, and some scattered showers, about a 10% chance of rain, and southeast winds moving at 5 miles an hour. And then Thursday, October 31st, Happy Halloween! We have a high of 79, a low of 67, some cloudy weather with only about a 10% chance of rain, trick-or-treaters, and south-southeast winds moving at 14 miles an hour. But wait! We also have a Halloween costume contest going on at the CSU studio. That's 218 Jordan Hall. Friday, November 1st, a new month, a high of 75, a low of 52, and some scattered turkey storms, that's what the T stands for, folks, with a 60% chance of rain and west-southwest winds moving at 7 miles per hour. Then on Saturday, November 2nd, we have a high of 73, a low of 46, and some sunny weather with no chance of rain and northwest winds at 12 miles an hour. And then finishing our week on Sunday, November 3rd, we have a high of 66, a low of 42, and some sunny weather with, again, 0% chance of rain, and north, northeast winds at 8 miles an hour. Well, folks, I'm Joey Davila, and that was our Columbus State News weather. Say goodbye, Pumpy. He will eventually. Thanks, Joey. This week is Cybersecurity Awareness Week. Here are our friends over at UITS with more. Hey, each year here at, at CSU, we have a Cybersecurity Awareness Week, and we do that um, in cooperation with the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, each year during the week, uh, from Monday and Tuesday, we'll be having a booth here at the university on main campus at the library and one downtown at the Rankin Center. On Wednesday and Thursday, we have two guest speakers. Sarah Thomas from the GBI will be there on Wednesday, and uh, Stan Gatewood from the University System of Georgia, the Chief Information Security Officer, will be here on Thursday. Both will be speaking to our students about um, online security and uh, uh, staying safe online. On Friday, Dr. Baltimore will be airing interviews with each of our uh, speakers, Sarah Thomas and Stan Gatewood to air on our CSU TV on Friday. We also have a poster contest and the five finalists in that poster contest will be uh, will, will be at our booths. We'll have the posters there for the students to vote on and um, when you vote on those posters then we'll give you a free water bottle. The CSU Rec Center's Aquatic Area is looking to get cougars in the water as it's offering swimming lessons for Columbus State students. CSU's Brandy Phillips reports. Hey guys, I am Brandy Phillips reporting from your CSU Direct. Kobe Garrick shares with CSU TV opportunities for swimmers to take swimming lessons in their rec center starting from October 21st through November 18th. So, um, every semester we've done a beginner swimming lesson that is for anyone who never had swam before, they want to learn how to swim. First we teach them to get comfortable in the water, bob up and down, get used to that feeling of the water over their face, and then we start getting them floating, front float and back float, um, and then start doing freestyle, elementary backstroke, and backstroke. And then uh, we're, we're starting an intermediate class where, where you're going to perfect those strokes and then also learn the breaststroke and the very beginning of the um, dolphin kick. Colby also explains how anyone can join the swim club, which ends on December 4th. Practices are held every Monday from 7.30 a.m. through 8.30 a.m 
and Wednesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Someone who, who's never uh, swam before could take our beginner class, then the intermediate, and by the end of those, you, you can join our, our swim club uh, where people just come and practice. It's free. Um, two of our lifeguards lead it, and um, it's, it's a fun time to work out for everyone to motivate each other. I'm Brandy Phillips. Now back to you guys in the studio. CSU's ROTC program recently served up some goodwill with a side of maple syrup as members participated in a pancake breakfast for the homeless. For more on the great work from our future soldiers, here's Maggie Hurtado. Good afternoon, CSU. I'm Maggie Hurtado. Today we are taking a look at Columbus State's ROTC department. I interviewed Michael Kim, a senior cadet who will give insight on the upcoming event. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Michael Kim. I'm with Columbus State ROTC. Uh, currently, our program is ranked number one, and we're trying to stay at uh, that number one spot by uh, raising money through fundraisers to um, conduct future uh, training exercises and to establish more military scholarships. Uh, Students interested in taking part in supporting the ROTC program must contact Cadet Michael Kim or any ROTC cadet for further information to purchase their $5 tickets for the Applebee's breakfast. It will be held November 2nd from 8 to 10. Yeah. Come and support your ROTC department. I'm Maggie Hurtado. Back to you guys at the studio. When we return, we'll have Lucas highlighting the recent Shave to Save here at CSU. We'll also have a special segment for all of you CSU fashion fashionistas. We'll be right back here with CSU News. Welcome back. Lucas Ely is here once again with another installment of Greek Life, where he highlights one of the organizations of efforts to raise money for breast cancer. On October 24th, CSU's chapter of Kappa Sigma hosted their seventh annual Shave to Save at the T.Y. Whitley Clock Tower. This is our seventh annual Shave to Save, and we, what we do is the brothership Kappa Sigma at CSU. Some of us dye our hair pink, but most of us shave our heads all in the for breast cancer awareness and to raise money for the cause. The money we collect today is going to go to the American Cancer Society um, and it's going to go to breast cancer research and it's going to benefit those who are suffering from cancer, those who have cancer in the future and hopefully we can find a cure. We're going to have all our brothers around 25 or 30 brothers and anyone else who wants to come out and shave their heads are more than welcome to do so. We're just looking for something different, you know, um, something different to raise money for breast cancer awareness because no one else had ever thought of the idea of shaving your heads. And so we started kicking off here at CSU. We're the first campus to do it in the nation. Hopefully we reach our goal of $7,000 and we go ahead and donate this money to the American Cancer Society. Most haircuts would start with an amateur wielding the clippers, but one of the professionals from the boys' barbershop just across the street from main campus would always come in behind them to clean up. So if you see anyone with a freshly shaved head or a scalp that's dyed a bright pink, just know that they've contributed to a very good cause. Cougars took to the catwalk recently as American Marketing Association and Beyond the Runway held a joint fashion show. Shaquille and Courtney are here with all the highlights for the event. Hi, I'm Shaquille, and I'm reporting for the practice of the AMA Marketing Fashion Show. Let's see what's going on. Come on, let's check it out. Um, really, I just want us to, other than make money, I don't want us to do basic fundraisers. Really, really great. We'll see you next year. 
Beyond the Runway and the American Marketing Association collaborated in a mini fashion show this past Thursday at the Clock Tower. The initiative was to inform CSU students the proper ways to dress in certain business situations and environments. The categories were interview, business casual, and formal wear. Thanks to all who came out and supported. If you think you've missed all the fun, you most definitely have not. BTR is hosting their first fashion show of the year in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, titled Fight Like a Champ, October 24th. <laughs> Tickets are $4 at the door and $3 if you wear pink, as well as in advance. This is an event you won't want to miss. As Columbus State relies heavily on the support of former students, the CSU Alumni Association plays a crucial role in keeping strong ties with Cougars that have gone on to successful careers after college. For more on the Alumni Association, here's Crystal. I'm Crystal K reporting live from CSU TV. The number one goal of CSU students is to graduate, but what do you do after graduation? Here's a little message from the alumni team. The Alumni Association offers a lot of engagement opportunities with our current alumni, so we do a lot of networking events. We offer a lot of engagement events between the alumni and our current students, and it's a really good way for alumni to give back to the university. The Alumni Association is imperative to CSU because a university is not successful without their alumni. Our alumni are basically what keep the university going because they donate their time, their support, and their financial resources in order to make our programs better and give our students a better quality of education and their student experience while they're here. The benefits of being a part of the CSU Alumni Association are mainly our engagement opportunities. We host a lot of networking events, um, usually held on the first Thursdays of every month. We'll do things called uh, Cougar Coffees, which are our breakfast mixers, and we'll have our evening mixers that are called First Thursdays, usually um, at some of the local restaurants in town. And we also have a lot of other opportunities that you can give back through the university as far as philanthropy events. I decided to come back to CSU because I really enjoyed my time as a student here, and now that I get to be a part of the staff, it's great because there's so much growth going on, and it is so exciting to be a part of the growth and changes that are going on at, on campus. You know, it's so great to come back to CSU because without CSU, I probably wouldn't have had this career. So it's, it's nice that I have this opportunity through them. Thanks for watching. Now back to you guys in the studio. Well, that's all for CSU News. Thanks for watching. I'm Sharifa Jackson. And I'm Cody Wah. Happy Halloween, Cougars.